Uh, yep, yeah, it's working. Hi, guys. So the reason that we thought we'd get here together today for you is to just show you the little, uh, I can't remember what you call it, a PPS thing, PowerPoint presentation that I put together for the um, it, Nigel's Real Fun event, which we did the other night for a, a private, pe private people, private, <laughs> private audience of people. Oh, I'm not even sharing with you. I've got to share the screen. Yeah, I just made you host. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to share the screen. Now, there's a couple of times during the PowerPoint presentation where there's movies or something. I'm not going to be able to play them because they're both, both of them are songs and we'll get copyrighted if I attempt to play them. But what I'll do is I'll link them below. And then the other thing is, is there's a little movie from Nigel that um, was the one about his school in the town. I did play it the other day um, on the one that Anne-Marie and I did. What's that, what's that one called, Anne-Marie? The uh, song Super Tramp, you mean? No, no, what was that video that we did the first time for the funeral? What was that called? That was called, that's on uh, Anne Marie's uh, channel. I think it's just Nigel, Nigel Memorial, maybe. Okay, and that's on Anne Marie's channel. And I've got a bumper to it on my channel. But that, the Y Moran thing is on that. Now, if anybody wants that, it's on a different format. Um, but I can send it to them. All you've got to do is send me a message and I can send it. So, Enough of my waffle. Um, Nigel's Real Fun event, the funeral, called it the real fun because he used to talk about that in his channel, how he couldn't understand how funeral was an anagram for refund. So I wanted to feel the love that he projected and celebrate his life because he was a beautiful man. Um, so a note to all his loved ones. Thank you for sharing such a lovely man with us. He brought us so much to this world that we just want to say that this time you have our sincere condolences. And, oops, I put, we're not going to record this, but that's not our truth. Uh, why in the world, just move that out of the way. Why the word wake? Because the ripples sometimes leave behind when they die. Those waves just go on and on and on. They didn't leave us. They just left all those ripples. So one thing I'd like to highlight is the fact that I think an online relationship, like the one we all had or Nigel had with all of you, and the one we all had with Nigel is it's special. It's deeper. Um, I don't know about you, Anne-Marie, with regards to that, but do you agree that you kind of have a deeper relationship with people online? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, for sure. I, and it's like, uh, just nonstop grieving or, or feeling depressed about it too. But it, it, cause you make the connection. I don't think loneliness is like being around people. I think it's making a connection with people. And when you're understood and you make that connection, then, um, you're going to feel it on a really deep level when they go. So it's like we go to a place in our minds or our hearts to express and explore. And we get to speak our language of numbers or coincidences. And it's like when you when I like when I project out to you on a say, oh, um, like we're talking about a psychic thing that we both had an idea about, we know what we're speaking because we're speaking the same language. So it's like a given. Um yeah. Whereas we might, might not be able to experience that in our real worlds because there might not be anybody that speaks that language around us. Um, so anyway, it's unique. And I don't need to tell you guys that because you probably already know. So Nigel spread himself around. Thanks to Nigel and Harry. We've got a wealth of information that we can review over and over at any time. And the unique unique aspect about Aunt Nigel was he talked all the time to all these different people 
and invited them onto his shows and then introduced them to other people and then made notes at the bottom and then circulated that and and drew more and more people into his kind of wake really and um, so he networked people uh just yesterday Loomis was telling me that the amount of people she now subscribes to and listens to was a great deal to do with Nigel's talking about this channel or that channel and then linking it below so thanks Nigel so this is funny Nigel had a huge thing about the number 23 and the Devil's Playground 2 has now has 2.34 subscribers. And I just showed you a picture of that, but you probably can't see it. Then I came across just one video in there, which was the 666 video with 666 views made on the 6th of June. You can't make this up. But then I went back. Uh, Anne Marie and I had had a had a talk about the six 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 video, and neither of us wanted to change it. <laughs> but she'd had an experience which was kind of weird when we did this the other night. Do you want to talk about this white thing that you saw, the Nigel wearing white? Yeah, I was uh, I was going to try to just talk with him, like mediumship, and um. But we were all on there, so I go pretty deep. So I was kind of anticipating somebody saying something or getting pulled out of it. So I was having trouble concentrating. But I did, he did come in. I mean, he was there with us and he was wearing all white. And I'm like, why is he wearing all white? That's so weird. And then um, I remember his, he used his finger and was touching his ear. like, And I thought he was referencing, um, I can't remember her name. Was it B? Um, she was talking about an earring being on her shoe or something. And she thought it was a sign from Nigel. And I, and I thought he was saying, you know, and I think it was a dual message. Like, yes, that was me, but it was also, I'm listening to, I'm listening to you guys. I'm listening to this whole presentation. And um, I, I don't you, remember what else. You kept saying he's, he's wearing white, he's wearing white when you were doing that. Um, yeah so then i remembered you brought up this video and i think that was that about the time that he appeared that i was trying to do that yeah i don't know but he um i don't know if you remember that kim but he was wanting to ask me to marry him on <laughs> like I, on I, I a do. video on a podcast yeah. <laughs> yeah so he said he was gonna wear all white and this was the particular podcast so i wore like a white men's shirt and I said, dude, do, do not do it. I'm I'm gonna say no. I don't I don't take yeah. any chances with contracts. Yeah. I don't do this. And he's like, No, we're gonna do it. And I'm gonna make a point and I'm gonna ask you to marry me. And I was like, Kim, help me. I don't want to do this. <laughs> and uh he wore all white. Um, and I think maybe that's what that was. And then you just happened to show this particular yeah. podcast uh -huh. uh, screenshot, and there he is with the white shirt. But uh we didn't do it for some reason. I think something happened or Harry had to go or I don't know something he had planned got messed up so anyway uh, I think that's why he had all white on I think so too I just think he wanted you to remind him of that so yeah uh Marie from the telegram group posted this and she said I've got a song stuck in my head for over a week and it's making plans for Nigel and it was a hit in 1979 for XTC 11. In numerology, it peaked at number 17 for 11 weeks. I can't play it because, you know, about copyright. So I'll put the link in down below and just let me know what you think of it. I wasn't going to mention this at all, but then for some unknown reason, every time I went to paste and copy for the rest of the day, it kept saying, making plans for Nigel. It didn't matter whether I copied something else and then pasted it. What would come up was making plans for Nigel. So I went, okay, I'm going to put it in there. Oh. So he really, really, really loved his subscribers. He included everyone. And when he spoke in the comment or that comment, he used to come on at night with me in Zoom and go, oh, oh my goodness, people... Oh, oh, I got this comment, I got that comment, and that's inspired me to do this, inspired me to do that. He knew it was a two-way street, 
and he knew he felt better because you felt better because he felt better because you felt better. So he kind of knew it was a two-way thing. Um, which leads me to one little story that I'll tell you. Nigel used to nag me about 101. Oh, no, sorry, 101, LOL. And whenever we would type in, in fact, it wasn't just nagging me, it was nagging everybody in Telegram group. Don't use LOL. We'll use he, he instead, because he was trying to say that it was a meme, but it had funny energy. So he's trying to get us to replace that. And I, and I tried to type it the other day, and I, rem I couldn't remember why he said stop using it. So I asked in chat, and this is what they said. Mike from Sherlock's Apprentice said he didn't stop LOLing. I told Nigel I was giving him the energy because he was born on the 1st of October. Tamara said she didn't know that she said she thought it was Lucifer, our Lord. Luminous, Luminous said she thought it was two pillar, like a sig sigil energy, giving energy to the wrong side. Truth Seeker said LOL was the great I.O., that everything is lines and curves like the great I.O., that we are the portal. And then finally, Harry cleared up the matter by saying Nigel said it was two pillars with a portal between. Um, it also could mean 101, which is technically the Alpha and Omega. Um, so just one more strange story. That was, uh, I woke up this morning, uh, not this morning, the other morning, uh, the day after he died. He woke me up at 6 a.m. even though I'd been up all night, which is very nice. But he woke me up at 6 a.m. to tell me that he'd um, recorded a video on the 28th of August that he'd sent to me that he hadn't sent to anybody else. And it was a small video about his town and his school and his life in China. And he wanted me to deliver that or the, the town was to be, the, sorry, the video was to be delivered that Monday to the local government. So he wanted me to find that video on my, on my history. It took me about an hour, an hour and a half to find it, uh, just because we talked so much. And um, the weird thing was when we found it and we played it, um, when he played it back, and this is the conversation that we had about it, but... I said to him, wow, you, you're kind of not really there in the pictures. Uh, you're only like three quarters there and, and, and you might be standing between two people, but you're kind of like, I don't know, like hazy. And he said, yeah, that he knows that too. And he said, what do you think that could be? And I said, oh, I don't think it's anything bad. I just think it might be that you're in a slightly different frequency to them. So you could be vibrating slightly differently or something. It's also a sign that somebody's passing over or ready to pass over, but I didn't mention that at the time and I didn't think about that at the time. Have you, have you come across that at all, Anne-Marie? Yeah, there's different things. Um, some people can see like a black face on the person. There's different There's different um, things, but um, yeah, in the in a photo or video, you could be phasing out or it could be he was at a different vibration than that area, but you would, how would you know at the time when you're talking to him, you know, it's like, I, I didn't, you know, there's him. nothing wrong with them. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with them. So you're not going to say, well, you're going to die soon. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just, um, I would think of frequency first. Yeah. That's what I thought. And he just said, Mr. Mystery. Anyway, I, I put the conversation up there. You'd have to pause it to, that was the video, but it's <laughs> it's come a blank. But it's called Why Why Moran or something. I can't. I could play it now, but um, should I should I play it now? Sure. Um, are you sharing with sound? Did you no, click share? With I will. Sound? I will. Do maybe that. maybe go back out and go back in just to make sure, because I've already done that before go back out of the um, like do a re go back out and then go back into share again but hit that little button it gives you in between unless you can figure out how to do it all right 
So when you hit share screen, it'll say share with sound. Did it give you that or? No, but I can, I can go on. Oh, what is it? There you go. I can go on. And there might be another way to I can, get to it. I can go share sound. Oh, it's, it's a tick to share sound. Okay. All right. So, okay. Welcome go. to my little presentation Let's called see. the Wenshang Weigoren. The Wenshang Weigoren. Can you hear that? Yeah, maybe turn it up just to hear. I'll, I'll put it up. When I was asked to talk about my experiences as the foreign teacher at uh, Wenshang Shenzhou Middle School, I didn't really know where to start. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? As we go into 2023, this will be my ninth year teaching English in China. Four years in Jiangsu province, and I'm starting my fifth year at uh, Shenzhou. When I first took up the position back in 2018, um, I was told that I would be the only Westerner in the school. However, what I was not aware of at the time is <laughs> I would also be pretty much the only Westerner in Wenshang, which, you know, something that I get used to. I guess I'd be lying if I said that this fact alone didn't have a couple of negative effects on me. A little bit of boredom, a little bit of loneliness in the beginning. But, you know, the positivity of the, the students in um, in our school. That was one of the examples where I thought he was slightly more out of focus than the others. Yeah. Sorry. I don't just mean the international department. I mean throughout the whole the whole school. They're friendly, they're kind, lots of warm feelings, you know. I don't take these pictures, they do. <laughs> and then they send them to their WeChat and pick them up later when they get home. But, you know, just walking into a classroom and feeling the positive attitude or the positive energy, um, yeah, it's, it's heartwarming. It's, it's, it's great, you know. And every student, doesn't matter which grade they're in, they've got their own goals, his or her goals. And those goals may differ between the students. And all I want to do is to help our students to find the path that they need to take in order to achieve their goal. And by doing this, I automatically achieve my own goal. It's kind of what we call a win-win situation in the West. If my only sacrifice in order to achieve all this is to feel a little bit bored, a little bit lonely sometimes when I'm not in school, then it's a sacrifice well worth paying in my opinion you know that's the, the other one see how he's yeah not really there yeah i don't know these these are just awesome awesome kids great bunch of kids you know ha. somebody took this i i haven't got a clue i don't know one of the one of the kids um at, uh, at school said, hey, teacher, have you seen this? I'm like, no. Some random person <laughs> took a picture of me on my bike. Oh, my God, look, why go in? Why go in? But, you know, it's the same when I go outside or go to the supermarket. People here are warm and friendly and love to say hi. I've even had policemen driving past in their police car and stick their, hat, stick their, their hand out the window and shout, hi, you know. The teachers in the school are friendly. This this is a picture. The guys in um, in senior one invited me for dinner on uh, I think it was Dragon Boat, Dragon Boat, June third or June the fourth. Uh, you see the outside. I don't know what's going on there. The sky. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, we we had a great time, and of course, Mr. Wang, my big brother. Um, this is a 
pictures from a uh, a dinner we or a lunch we had after his uh, his son got uh, got married. So big thank you to uh, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Wang and of course to my good friend Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo has become a very good friend, and he's always ready to assist me when I need help with translation issues or or anything else. So, you know, Wenxiang's a pretty place. It's nice. And everywhere I go, you know, this is the um, Lotus Lake. My last apartment, my previous apartment, used to look out directly over this. Lovely little spot. And, of course, the shopping centres. Nothing wrong with those. You can find anything you want, even for a... Why go around like me? Uh, <laughs> you know, the cigarette lady, bless her. You know, the happiness, the kindness, the friendliness, the positivity that I see every day. I really wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. Thank you to everybody. So that was the, um, the video. Um, just... Thank you, Nigel, for bringing us all together. They say you don't miss someone till they've gone, and maybe that's true. But with Nigel, we can acknowledge that he left a big footprint and some key clues for us to work out where we are in relation to what to do with this reality. We're just all visitors to this time, this place. We're just passing through. Our purpose here is to observe, to learn, to grow, to love, and then return home. Australian Aboriginal proverb. So he told me on the 1st of November, which was only a couple of weeks ago, that one of his favourite songs was School by Supertramp. Um, he, that's his wording. One of my favourites as a child, huge truth drops. Um, so maybe do him the honour of listening to that and see if it tells you anything. I'll link it below. Um told a little story of the water beetle. Uh, so the water beetle is swimming along. Um, he's quite happy. He's going to this little water beetle school. And every day on his way to his water beetle school, he swims past the stalk. And the stalk sticks right the way up, right goes right away to the top of the pond. And everybody tells him not to go near the stalk. The stalk is really, 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 really bad. Um, that if you go near the stalk, you disappear. Loads of people have gone near the stalk and just vanished, and they never, ever, ever come back, and the water beetle should never go near the stalk. So one day on his way home from school, the water beetle decides to go. Just It's just curious, really. He just wants to go and have a look at the stalk. So he goes and has a look, and he ends up climbing up it. It's because he's curious and he climbs 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 all the way out the water and he climbs all the way up the stalk and then there's a leaf at the top of it and he falls asleep on the leaf. And then he wakes up and he's turned into a dragonfly and he's got wings and he soars up above the lake and he can see the lake from up above and he can see all the trees and he can see all the pretty colours on the lake and he can see all the lilies and all the, the water lilies and the blue of the lake and he's, oh my goodness, he's just completely and absolutely enthralled in what he's seeing. And then he wants to go back and tell his friends all about it. So he goes to go back in the water, but he can't because he's not, capable of going into the water anymore and he realizes that he'll never be able to tell his friends what he's seen anyway just the story of transformation and how the fact that when you're transformed it might be completely amazing but you wouldn't be able to come back and tell us so everything has meaning There's a any number of instances over the last few days where I've thought that Nigel was with me. But one of them was I went for a walk, I think on Wednesday, down the beach with a friend. And we had a whirly wind of sand following us up the beach. And then every time we stopped, 
the whirlywind would stop and then we'd just walk a little bit further and the whirlywind would follow us. It's cool. And all you have to do is to pay attention. So have you had anything like that, Anne-Marie? Um, I just feel like he's constantly right there. I, It's been a week since I found out. I mean, it's Sunday already. I don't even know where a week went. But I still feel the, the heaviness. I mean, I feel him around. So that, that is not a heavy feeling, but just the loss. I, I don't know why I'm still feeling it. It's just, I don't know. But I, I get messages all the time. And um, when I posted a video today and I was mentioning him in it and uh, I uploaded it, posted it at one eleven. Um, I mean, I'm just seeing seeing stuff all the time. So, oh, well. all we have to do is just pay attention. He's there. He's talking to us. Yeah. Um, but I know what you mean. It's not really very easy to get over the whole thing. So, um, can't remember who it was that posted this. Uh, Paul Debay. He posted this in chat, and it's just like a little Nigel mischief. So it's a name analysis. So down here you've got N-I-G-E-L. Um, and each of the letters, I'm expecting somebody to come, but maybe not just yet. Um thought there was somebody there. Now N, this letter holds the vibration of a troublemaker. That would be nice. Someone who always turns up with the most outlandish ideas. I, I is about inspiration in all areas of life and extracting it even from the very simple things which she could do. G, one is G, one is very attentive about others' feelings, included, and is included to showcase in most circumstances a predominantly emotion rather rational stance, which is Nigel. Ease energy associated with that number five that bears the meaning of compassion, fondness, and joy. And L is linked to the life principle of keeping busy with what makes one happy rather than focused on searching for the ideal happiness. Notice it's also got the EL at the end of his name, which is the ELs the dog or the god. A picture of a dog there. Okay, so nearly finished. This picture. Um, I don't think you saw this, did you? This picture came mm -hmm. up the other day. It was a sunset taken in Crete. I don't know whether... Oh, I can't zoom into it. Oh, I'll tell you what I'll have to do. I'll have to exit out that so I can zoom into it and then show you something. Oh. There you go, this one. So this was Crete the day that he died. It's the sunset, create the day that you died. Wow. In this picture, I think you showed it to everybody and then zooming in on it. So it's like a guy sat down with a hat on. Sorry, said she thought it was a yeah. Navajo Indian. There's his leg. He's like sat down on the campfire or the sunset, looking at the sunset. It's like a heart. It's like kind a heart. It kind of looks like a. Um... Yeah, it does. It looks like a. It looks like Nigel on his computer. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lion just about to eat his leg, which is interesting. Yeah, that it was his leg that caused all the problem to begin with. And then, yeah. I don't know what this. This looks like a cat, maybe a cat sat up. Yeah, the face and the ears. I don't know. And then. Um, there was, even somebody said they thought there was a, a dragon here. That, yeah, that's a wild, uh, wild sunset, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? And I mean, you've even got this up here, and yeah. you've got like this, like he's sitting looking out over lands. Yeah, it's, it's magnificent, isn't it? Mm. So I just added that in there. So anyway, um, I can stop sharing now. So uh I don't that was just the, the podcast that we played the other night when we did the private memorial thing. Um yeah. I we decided to share it with you guys because 
it's got a few poignant points in it, poignant points. Um, one of them being that he really, really, really loved his subscribers. Um, he talked about you guys a lot and referred to what you'd said and he always read your comments and always kind of like interacted with everybody and that really came out in the amount of expressions of grief that came out in the last week what you think yeah yeah um but i just want to say that was an exceptional presentation um and i just it just really hit me here in that video the second time that he was there for nine years yeah that is a long time yeah. Like, why didn't we get him out of there? I don't know. But um, yeah, Nigel loved everybody and loved interacting with everyone and valued everybody Yeah, and treated treated people with respect. Yeah. Um, it was just truly really here to help people wake up, to give them information, to help them have an easier time of it than he did when the way he woke up. And I think that's with all of us, you know, we just want to save people time, make it easier on them. Cause I think we're all here to wake each other up and um, do this together. And he knew that, and he did a large part of the leg of that journey. Yeah. Um, even his books, I think are, are, I, I've started reading book one and it's just um, telling his journey, but he tells it so clearly and makes breaks so many things down just simply concise really quickly that um yeah i'm gonna keep keep reading it's i think he's just left a, a huge legacy at one stage him and i talked about me doing videos on his books and he was quite happy like just a like reading his book out on a video and he was quite happy for me to do that at the time i don't know why i didn't um but I'd have wow. to really talk to his family and get permission to do that if they wanted me to do that. And if not, that's fine too. But Okay. Uh, He's got them um, posted online publicly to download and for free. Um, so there's no copyright on anything, but yeah, you probably want to ask the family. Cause I thought about that too. Um, as far as, uh, maybe doing something to sell them and and so that the uh, daughter you know defer the funds to her but yeah i think everybody said no on that he wanted it to stay free but wow you reading <laughs> reading the books would be i think that would be really really special well i might ask um barry about, i might ask barry to ask the family because i haven't got any contact with them and i don't want to ask one I might leave it a week or so and then see. Yeah. But um yeah. just, just all in all, I mean, it's a lot of people that really can't stop crying. Um, I was talking to genetic genetically modified on um uh, uh by email and she was just saying that she's been really, really, really disrupted by this. And other people too, other people have been really, really affected. So yeah, kind of wanted to say I, I'm not able to move on. I'm I'm trying, but it's like I can't. Uh, not ready. Maybe not move on, but it's like I I feel like I just found out still. So I don't know. I mean, one of the things that that always helps with grief is being able to talk about the person. Um, but it's yeah. pretty difficult in this case, but there's nothing to stop us having you know a few days this week where we all get together on zoom and just chat and don't record it yeah yeah that's a good idea especially while while it's so raw uh, i mean yeah I'm, I'm busy but i'm usually here in the mornings and nights um anyway let's um is there anything else you wanted to talk about or is that it I don't think so. I, I'm just really struggling with um, the regret and, and not helping him or, I don't know, doing more. I'm still struggling with that, but I think it's just part of the process. Um, 
No, I think you did a fabulous job. I'm glad you're sharing it here. Thank you. So that more people can see that and um, get to know another level of him. Yeah. Yeah. That maybe they didn't know. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Anne-Marie. Um, I'm going to stop you. recording now. Um, okay. Thanks for inviting me to come on here with you. Thanks. Bye, guys. Okay.